Here to analyze the 2012 legislative session, we have Senate Majority Leader Dave Senjum. Thanks for joining us today. Julie, it is good to be here. And it is great to have you here as always. Senator, let's talk a little bit about the session, beginning with the top priority of your caucus was job creation. Sure. So given the fact that you have a small bonding bill, um, the intention was to reform the tax structure, would you say that enough was done to spur job growth? This well, session? we're still working on it. Actually, the governor has a tax bill yet, and uh, I suspect by the time that uh, this uh, program is aired, we'll know what the outcome of that is. Uh, that, that I think that was a, a good bill to, to spur jobs. Uh, going back, certainly, as you mentioned, uh, some regulatory reform efforts. Uh, I think in many respects, it's uh, what didn't happen. And, uh, and you know, throughout this biennium, uh, no demonstrable new tax increases, things like that there. I think we kind of held the, the line on all of this from the standpoint of, uh, of not making the situation worse. We tried to make the situation better, obviously. Uh, it's difficult in the divided government uh, in terms of finding that uh, sweet spot that the governor can agree to. Frankly, he didn't agree to very many, and uh, so that uh, I think is part of what might look like a uh, kind of a contested legislature. But by and large, I, uh, I think we did pretty well. Uh, again, particularly in the area of uh, regulatory reform, school reforms uh, did pretty, uh, I think we were pretty effective in that area. So, you know, it's a, it's a step at a time. There's uh, no great big home run every time that we meet. So I think we're satisfied and made good progress. A couple of the bills that arguably would be called big bills uh, that were signed by the mm -hmm. governor include HHS and K-12, and they strengthened early literacy mm -hmm. programs and also restored payments to personal care assistance. Do you think these were really good bills and do they do enough? Well, they're they're about what we you know can can afford at at a, at a time like this. Obviously, we're on the uptick. We feel this way, and that's frankly why we had a little extra budget surplus to put towards some of these uh, needs that uh, that were uh, uh, frankly reduced last uh, session. So, I think generally speaking, we feel pretty excited about moving forward. We're able to again solve some of these real problem areas, and moving forward, hopefully, we'll do better. Senator, given last session resulting in a government shutdown, no real compromise with the governor, was it a priority for you to try to avoid a contentious end of session? Well, oh, I don't think I ever really thought about it. Uh, these things are contentious. We know that. Uh, certainly, uh, there's no reason to shut down. There's no budgetary issues on, on the table. But uh, frankly, we wanted to make things work, you know, and, uh, and making things work is certainly in the eyes of the holder. Uh, we were able to put together a capital investment bill that's pretty much framed around a lot of infrastructure, and uh, that's going to be good for Minnesota. Uh, people can like or not like the stadium bill, but after 10 years, it happened, and uh, we'll see how this, uh, you know, this goes forward in terms of the viability of electronic pull tabs. But uh, you know, for the time being, at least, that one's sort of off the table now, and we can uh, forget about stadiums hopefully for a good long time and and move forward with, frankly, the priorities of the state. Which are. Well, jobs and, uh, and, and, uh, and a new economy, jobs and prosperity. That's what people want. Uh, they tell, you, you don't have to go very far. Whether you go into a business, go into any town meeting, it's, uh, it's uh, jobs and where we're going to find jobs. You go to a college, you know, or talk to these students, uh, you know, is there going to be a job when I graduate? That is a priority of Minnesota, frankly, the priority of America. And we need to match up and to do the best we can to create the kind of environment that uh, that does create jobs in Minnesota. Senator, it's your third term. Compare this past session in terms of tone and tenor to the prior sessions. Oh, I think they're you know they're all different a little bit, but uh, in particular, I think uh, with the uh, with the divided government, and that's what the citizens of Minnesota brought us. Uh, uh, a DFL governor, uh, a two chambers uh, within the state house here that are both Republican. Uh, we're going to have differences. There's no question about it. Uh, we look at the world a little bit differently in terms of, of how to approach needs. So, uh, in that sense, maybe the tenor was different. But uh, I think throughout, we tried to work closely with the governor and find some compromise. Uh, on some certain issues. We have some things which we feel strongly about. Uh, some of these tort reform ideas early on were a big disappointment when they vetoed those. The tax bill is always a big disappointment because we think uh, a good tax bill will move Minnesota forward from the standpoint of jobs in the economy. So that's always a disappointment. Uh, but you kind of look to those areas that you can make work together with the governor. And we try to do that. Uh, and again, I think maybe the, the bonding bill, the capital investment bill, probably the the prime example of that in terms of just general agreement. And how important was it for you as chair of the bonding committee to try to pass a bill that the governor would sign? Well, it's, uh, you know, it, it, 
it's one of those things, you, you do it for the right reasons. And, and the right reasons are, and you only have to tour Minnesota to find out rather quickly that there are a lot of infrastructure needs out there, whether it's colleges, the University of Minnesota, roads, bridges, flood control issues, uh, uh, on and on. Those kind of issues dominate in terms of, uh, of our needs. And you know, you can kind of decide early on whether or not you want to take care of these things and maintain them in the fashion that they need to be maintained or you get rid of them. And we're not about to get rid of uh, a lot of this, so we, we better take care of it. That's what the bonding bill did. Okay, Senator, I want to just close by asking you if you think Minnesotans are better off because of the legislation passed this session. Oh, I, th I think so. Just moving forward, uh, and, I, and I think I'll go back to what maybe wasn't passed. We didn't have any major tax increases of, of any sort like that. I think we kind of held the lid. We did some good things in the area of uh, regulatory reform, and, uh, and particularly in schools, uh, but also in terms of business permitting. I think overall, Minnesota is a better place because of this legislative session. And is that your message then to voters? Going oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, we're, we're here. We're going to continue to stress the jobs and the economy, uh, making this tax structure right so it can compete in America. That's important to us. That's the road we'll go down. Okay. Senate Majority Leader Dave Senjum, thanks so much for your time. Good. Thank you, Julie.